Hey guys, Ryan Moody here, helping you to fish smarter, not harder. After three decades as a charter fishing guide in Northern Australia, I have many favourite lures that I've chosen after a lot of trial and error. This video will highlight the lure selection in my tackle box if I were planning a trip to tropical Australia fishing offshore waters. Now the categories I'm going to cover are both deep and shallow um, hard bodies, sinking stick baits, floating stick baits, the poppers and soft plastics, metal slices and slow pitch jigs. Okay guys, first off I'm going to show you the deeper hard bodies. These are a bigger lure. Now we used to troll these around deep bombings and drop-offs. We used to use these for mostly catching marlin bait, things like scaly mackerel, Spanish mackerel and that sort of thing. Usually around that 5 and 8 metre divers is great and the uh, best thing about them was quite often we would catch things like coral trout and other reef species even though we predominantly use them for catching our marlin bait. So fantastic little lures uh, for that kind of thing. Many different types out there, just ask your local tackle shop. This is our um, scale blazer once again, this is one we use for the, the barramundi inshore. But what we do, we put the, uh, smaller than these of course, we put the single hooks on them and we cast them over the reef flats. And these once again, great for many reef species up on the shallow flats things like coral trout and, and all those sort of things. But I do swap the trebles out, put the single hooks on. So that's our scale blazer that you can get in our shop. Next, we have the stick baits, sinking and floating. Now I did talk about our pillager, that's the one you can get in our shop, that's the RMF pillager. I do use these in the estuaries, and like I mentioned in our inshore blog about lures, is I use these offshore as well. I've used these to as deep as 30 metres on wonky holes and bits of rubble. Caught all variety of species, finger mark and nanny guy, gold spot cod, coral trout, all sorts of critters eat these. And um, on the way down, quite often, they'll get smashed by things like queenfish, grey mackerel, Spanish mackerel, and all that sort of stuff. So if you can get through the pelagics, you'll get to the bottom fish. And they don't usually last down there too long. These things are absolutely amazing. I know they look small, but uh, they do take a little while to sink. And if there's a little bit of current in that 25 to 30 meters of water, we just throw them up current and let them sink down like so. But they are absolute killers. Fish love them. Okay, now there are also bigger versions of sinking stick baits. Uh, these guys are used on the reef flats and around bommies for things like coral trout and GTs. And you can let these guys sink and they'll, they'll have a bit of a flutter as well. You let them sink deeper around the bombies and then retrieve them erratically jerking the rod tip and that's great for getting things like coral trout interested and, and many other reef species out there as well. Um, long nose emperors, there's just a, a huge variety of fish out there that will take these guys. And that's one from Nomad, the Mad Scad. And also this, uh, the floating the stick baits, more better for GTs and things like that and that'll just hop along the surface a lot more uh, than the sinking ones. So I always carry a variety of these guys. Um, the, the, I've had a couple of big Mary Rass um, hit these on the surface now, and unfortunately we, we didn't get the hooks in both of them. Um, they are a protected species, we weren't targeting them of course, but um, that's one of those things. So many different species out there, you don't know what's gonna come up and have a go at these lures next. And the best thing about them is the visuals, watching the fish come up on them and crash them. So it's one of my favourite forms of fishing. Uh, I just don't get to do it enough, unfortunately. Uh, but hopefully soon we're going to end up back up on the reefs and we're going to give them another go. Then there's poppers, used in the same kind of areas. Uh, the little channels coming out of the reefs, isolated bombies in the lagoons, those kind of areas. Um, the run out tide when the reef drains through these gutters and channels is some of the best times to be doing this on larger tides closer to the moons. But uh, this is the um, Halco rooster popper, very popular, um, very well priced. And once again, yep, change over to the single hooks. I just find that it uh, doesn't restrict the action as much as trebles and um, a bit easier to get out of fish too. And they don't get stuck in landing nets as much. So that is the rooster popper from Halco. Now the size of the popper can vary as well. You can use smaller ones like that or these big guys from Old Dog. Now they're specifically designed to attract larger fish of course, but even the smaller fish will still have a go. 
and with the poppers, nice concave head on them and on a slight angle as well as that pushes forward. You can either bloop them after short bloops and then pause them or sometimes just a fast retrieve. Um, just try, try the different retrieves on the day and just see what starts to work the best. And um, yeah, once again, a couple of different sizes there. So take a few different size poppers with you when you're out there. Right, some of the soft plastics I use out there. This is one of my favorites. It's the Berkeley Power Bait. I use these on wonky holes uh, where we chase things like largemouth denigai and gold spots and bar cheek trout. Even occasionally red emperor as well. We get the odd red emperor on them. Uh, these guys are just a killer. They're very great, just uh, well weighted, get down quickly. Um, same thing, just a, a slow, steady retrieve once they hit the bottom. And sometimes just jig them up slowly and let them fall back down again. So there's a couple of different retrieves that you can use. Um, so that's the power bait from Berkeley. Very good lure. But other plastics, like I mentioned before, on our inshore blog is the Kitec Swing Impact Fat. You would just put heavier jig heads on than what you would use inshore. So these guys will still work offshore as well. Then we move over to our metal lures, things like metal slices. Now they come in different sizes, of course. Um, with these guys here, there's all sorts of brands too, guys. Many of them work. Uh, the larger ones you use for the bigger species of pelagics, like your Spanish mackerel. And these smaller ones you would use for species like tuna, because it's all about the size of the bait fish that they're actually feeding on. So these guys here work very well for tuna, and those larger ones work very well for things like Spanish mackerel. Actually, I can remember on the marlin boat days working out of Lizard and that off the motherships, we used to use these small metal slices on a spin rod while we were trolling these to catch the bigger baits around the bommies. We would flick these out to the side on a spin rod at the same time to try and catch oceanic queenies and fish like that. And I did remember one day this tiny little slice caught about an 18 kilo coral trout. <laughs> you wouldn't think that would happen. And um, of course it's not gonna happen all the time. That was just a story from many years ago. So different sizes to suit different fish, depending on the size of the bait fish they feed on. And then we have the slow pitch jigs. Slow pitch jigging has come a long way in recent years. Many people are getting into it now. It's a lot cleaner than using bait. And it's very exciting when those fish hit you on the drop. These are our levitator jigs that we have in our shop. Uh, I've trialled many different sorts of these. And these guys here, just so many different times, they were just getting smashed before they hit the bottom, more so than any other jig. And watching them, they have a bit of a scallop taken out of them there. And they're more weighted up one end. We have them in 80 and 100 gram sizes for up to you know 30 to 50 metres of water, especially. And uh, on the drop, depending on the retrieve up and then the fall, if they fall weight, the weighted end first, this keel end first, they sort of slide like that out to the side and with these hooks dragging behind them, they actually look like a squid swimming away, not so much a fish. Awesome. The other way that they fall is a flutter down like that and that's what drives these fish mad. So that's our levitator jigs, we've got upgraded hooks on them as well and we've been catching all sorts of species on these. And I've got so many great stories. Finger marks, trout, all kinds of pelagics, reds, so many different species on these lures. So that's our levitator jigs. We have four different colors and you can get them in our RMF shop. So guys, if you liked that little tip and you'd like to see more, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook and Insta. And if you only want some special tips, we send out by email only. Head on over to our website, ryanmoodyfishing.com and sign up for free email updates. Get in the great outdoors, keep fishing smarter, we'll see you next time.